Howdy, it's Dr. Stone. We're going to uh, go over some of the muddy terms that are muddy concepts that you have for 326. Had the TA kind of look at uh, where we're at with, um, you know, with, with, with your knowledge. And so this was on the quiz that we had the other day. And I uh, had these all ranked on here. And so, um, oh, can't use my pen here, but uh, equivalent conversion problems and greenhouse gases and perhaps working with nitrate as nitrogen uh, looks like the most challenging one. Uh, we have some better in-class examples. Yep, we can work on some of that. And partial pressures. Uh, slowing down the lecture would be ideal as well. So instead of cramming more into lecture, I'm going to provide some um, some uh, modules that I'll post here on YouTube that can explain some of these concepts. So I went and looked at my chemistry book from long ago here and uh, found the definition for you know the equivalent weight. And so I read this. This is a textbook, and maybe you should refer to your chemistry textbook. Uh, uh, oxidation reduction reactions equivalent is defined as the quantity of oxidizing or reducing agent that can accept or furnish one mole of electrons. Thus, the equivalent of a reducing agent will react exactly with one equivalent of an oxidizing agent. So really you're looking at the number of electrons that are transferred from one oxidizing agent to a reducing agent. And so we went over some examples of what those equivalent weights are. Uh, just a second, let me find that information. Okay, I got it found here. And so again, we are looking at uh, the normality is a good example. And so uh, I think we started with uh, hydrochloric acid, HCl. All right. And so we got the molecular weight, 1 plus 35, and that's grams per mole. And then we have uh, one mole, but how many equivalents is that? If this dissociates, uh, it, it would just, you know, the charge of hydrogen 1, chloride minus 1. So there's one electron transfer, one equivalent that's uh, transferred there. And so this one in particular is 36.5 grams per equivalent. And that's the equivalent weight that you have uh, for this species. Gets a little more complicated. Uh, we looked at calcium carbonate, CaCO3. This is commonly used to describe water hardness. And so we got the uh, molecular weight. And so we got uh, 40, oops, let's go to the eraser here. 40 plus 12 plus 3 times 16. All right, all that divided by, and that's one mole. The molecular weight of CaCO3 times one mole of this. How many equivalents? So this would be two equivalents. And why is that? We got calcium two plus and carbonate at minus two. So there's through this oxidation reduction reaction we would have two electrons that are transferred uh, here. So we're dividing by two equivalents. And so that's a key point uh, why we're dividing by that. Uh, and so we Finish this up, and we would get um, equals to 50 grams per equivalent. So then we looked at that uh, bottled water example, and we wanted to put everything into, um, you know, essentially calculate hardness uh, as milligrams per liter as CaCO3. Is that right? So we wanted to do that, find the concentration of hardness. And so an example of that, those calculations that we would do, and so we looked at the bottles for Avian water and Pellegrino water, uh, great stuff. Uh, so to, to convert this to units of milligrams per liter at CaCO3, we would take our species, our divalent cations, so whatever our, I'll just put metal concentration in, and this is milligrams per liter times 50 and so that's our grams per equivalent weight and that 50 came from up here with our calculations that's the good that's our do our conversion and then we would divide by equivalent weight of the divalent uh, cation and so this would be grams in grams per equivalent as well. And so that would give us, if we multiply these out, at some concentration in milligrams per liter as CaCO3. Perfect. 
And so we went through and we calculated these for calcium 2 plus, magnesium 2 plus, and looked at all these different species uh, that are there. So um, we'll just go through the magnesium calculation. So let's pretend we had uh, water that had 19 milligrams per liter of magnesium times, here's our 50 grams per equivalent, and this is for CaCO3. And on the new denominator, so we have the molecular weight of magnesium, 24 grams, uh, mil oops, grams of magnesium, yep, Mg2 plus, all that divided by two equivalents. Why? Because we have that two charge. So when we have any oxidation reduction reactions that occur, we would need to, um, there's two electron transfer. And so we would uh, finish this one up, and so we would get 79.1 milligrams per liter as CaCO3. Okay, another muddy area was looking at um, uh, converting uh, nitrates, uh, let's say milligrams per liter as nitrate nitrogen. So let's uh, revisit that uh, those calculations to convert or to uh, calculate nitrate nitrogen. So the example problem that I did, I believe this is in your textbook. Um, uh, let's see. So we got ammonia NH3 at 30 milligrams per liter, and we've got nitrate NO3 minus equals uh, five milligrams per liter, given and we want to find uh, the total nitrogen concentration. Total nitrogen concentration in units of milligrams of nitrogen per liter. Uh, milligrams NH3 nitrogen per liter. And lastly, in milligrams of nitrate nitrogen per liter. So those are very common. So again, we could put this one in this form, and we can put this one nitrate into this form. Okay, so solving step number one, two, three. Okay, so we have 30 milligrams per liter. Let's just go through these calculations here. Uh, let's choose this color. So we got Oops. Yeah, writing on a tablet is pretty challenging here. I'm used to writing on a different one. Uh, milligrams NH3 per liter times. All right, so we got our 30 milligrams of nitrate, or excuse me, ammonia per liter times one mole of this. So, so we can calculate what that molecular weight is. 17 grams times uh, one mole. NH3 divided by one mole of nitrogen. So again, we only have one nitrogen species that's there in this form. If we had N2H3 or whatever it could be, then we'd have two moles of that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, two moles up here on this uh, on the numerator. Okay, so then we would uh, times get that one mole. Nitrogen is equal to 14 grams. And we can solve that, and we would get 24.7 uh, units now are in milligrams of NH3 dash nitrogen per liter. So it's written as written as ammonia dash nitrogen per liter. All right, so we've uh, we certainly got that one solved for that would be step number oh, that would be step number two. So we've got that calculated. And let's do the same thing for nitrate. And so similar calculation now we have five milligrams per liter times sixty-two grams is uh, one mole of nitrate, NO3 minus times one mole of NO3 minus divided by one mole nitrogen. So again, we only have one mole of nitrogen that's in there. 
times are 14 grams uh, one mole nitrogen. And we could solve this and that would be equal to 1.1 milligrams nitrate nitrogen per liter. All these are written in forms of nitrogen. So if we wanted to calculate the total amount of nitrogen that's in the system, since this is written in nitrogen as nitrogen, this one's written as nitrogen, we can add these up together. And so to do that, again, total nitrogen would be equal to 24.7 plus 1.1 would equal 25.8 milligrams of nitrogen per liter. Everything's written as nitrogen. And that would be our final answer there.